All right. How's it going, guys? We're back here with another edition of Our Makes and Bad Takes. I'm Milo Coulter, and I'm joined here by Caleb Downing and Memo Pinto. How's it going, fellas? I never get tired of hearing your voice, Milo. Uh, how are you doing, my man? I'm doing great. I'm doing a great. Nice sunny day here in L.A. Can't complain one bit, man. I'm sat in here hungover all day. Shut up. <laughs> I'm not opening the blinds for anything. Oh, you're faded, bro. Um, Am I? I'm just tired, homie. I wish I was faded. I ran out last night. Anyways, we're not going to talk about that. Uh, Caleb. <laughs> yeah. Man, what's going on? How's your day, man? You look like you got a little Asian glow going on. Did you drink it all? No, this is actually like dried off sweat. I was at the gym. Just, yeah, no, it's it's pretty disgusting. How does I know. it dry like that? You look like the, you remember the seal from that one SpongeBob episode? <laughs> remember when they <laughs> lathered him up? I, I, I can like oh, imagine the, the, the shininess, but I can't say I do. Yeah, okay. That's fair. All right. Hey, you guys ready to get fired up by some statements today? Statements, yeah. Milo, make your statement. Let's hear. There's been there's some, been some accusations going around over our boys, and we have to over clear our boys. Up. So basically, everybody is saying that our team that's struggling to stay in second place now is undergoing a hangover, a sizable hangover from their World Series championship last year. Um, the Dodgers. What are they, 44 and 31 or 32 now? They just got no hit by the Chicago Cubs. And what is going on? I mean, the team is a, is asleep at the wheel, you know? You're missing Seager. Bellinger is lost at the plate. He's looking at pitches right down the middle. Gavin Lux is turning into a bust. What's going on? And how can we get out of this, boys? I don't see a problem right now, you know? My phone this last like two, three days has been flooded with texts from Cubs fans, Mets fans, Padres fans talking all this crap. But if you look at it, our record's still the same or better than those teams. And we're going in July, hottest. We're the best team in baseball ever in July. If we remember three years ago, the Sports Illustrated cover, oh, best team ever. When was that published? Beginning of August, end of July. You know, Motherfuckers are talking about like Dodgers ain't no hitters, Dodgers ain't this, Dodgers ain't about that. Dodgers ain't about nothing, my boy. Talk bro, to but, but but like we're their dads, bro. Like we're their dads. Ten years straight. Like we we've really played Big Brother 40, for so long though. What was we that? We have a forty-three-year-old man about? playing first base. Like like we have nothing right now. We're putting crap out of the field because everybody's hurt and we're still dominating these other teams. Like, our record is still very good in comparison to the rest of the league. And we're only going to get hotter when we get healthier. So you think Zach Rex and Sheldon Noisy will make an impact on that team? No. I think the guys will come back. Seager's coming back soon. Ballinger's going to get into form. Mookie's going to get into form eventually. But all those dudes get comfortable and complacent every time that they start winning. 10 out of like 10 out of the last 15, for example, all those dudes get complacent. It's it's time that the young dudes on the roster take advantage of the fact that they're going to have these four months to play a lot of baseball. And there are a couple of bright spots in all of it. Zach McKinstry, major bright spot in all of this. I'm loving the way he's playing. I'm loving his attitude towards playing on the Dodgers roster. And I mean, I remember looking at him going, okay, cool. I seen him in AAA three times. Who the fuck is this kid? How the hell did he make it up? Who got, how did he get called up? And now he's a household name, man. It's 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 things like that that, for example, Edwin Rios, fuck, fuck. Oh, that little patch of time that he had to make his name well known in a Dodger household, gone. Like he was that. the you best only have so power much. hitter in the entire. Even though you know limited plate appearances and all that, he was just a one run rate. Omar Mazzara. That's all he was. Yeah, exactly. And he's gonna get traded for a relief pitcher in a year and a half anyway. He's gonna hit so, forty home runs for another team. I can all I'm saying is, all I'm saying is, like, we're like so like caught up with like, oh, we're struggling right now, but like, the like who the Giants and all these NL teams and the the Padres coming up on us, right? Why should we feel threatened? We're like, they're the 15 year old kid that just got the chest pump at a YMCA and thinks they could throw a sucker punch at us. Do you think the Dodgers, their dads, who've been whooped on it for 10 years straight, aren't going to go upstairs, grab the belt? And reassert their dominance like they've done. Yo, you're asking a dude who hit his dad at 15. So I don't know if that's the best, uh, <laughs> the best but, take but, on this. But, but at but the same time, you never know, man. You little brother's greatest gang. baseball team to ever grace the field played last year. And we're saying that they can't get into form this year. 
after numerous injuries and struggles. Do you see? Do you see any big trades on in, on August first for the trade deadline for Los Angeles for like a bat or maybe another arm? Now that Dustin May's out for the year until next year, what do you guys see there? Andrew Friedman's a pussy. <laughs> He's not going to do anything too drastic uh, this side of the year. Um, if anything, he's going to dump one or two prospects that are floating around. Don't be surprised to see, like, Micah White, you know, <laughs> traded for a relief arm or something like that. I don't know. Uh, they need a guy probably – I would like to see another left-hand bat. I would like to see a consistent left-hand bat hit that roster every day. Uh, shit, make Albert hit left-handed. You can probably do it by this point. I'm <laughs> what do you think, Milo? Uh, you know who I'm really liking on the Nationals? who should come to the Los Angeles Dodgers is Kyle Schwarber. I think he would make a good spot. Oh, oh, right. Because after torching seven home runs in the last eight games, Nationals are going to be like, here, L.A., here's Kyle Schwarber. But think about this. The Nationals have no chance at the postseason. They're trying to get rid of Scherzer as well when you think about that. And when you look at his stats, I was looking at Schwarber's stats. He has 21 home runs, which is more than anybody on the team. 49 runs batted in, which is more than anybody in the Dodgers as well. He's basically like a Jock Peterson when you think about it. And he's a funny dude. I mean, he has a funny social media presence. He was a choir singer in high school. The Dodgers need somebody who's kind of funny. Jock Peterson was that guy. So was Kike Hernandez. And we lost them. And basically, the way I see it, I think Schwarber would be a great left-handed bat addition to that Los Angeles Dodgers team. I, I agree. Do you think that the lack of humor in the dugout is the reason that we got no hit by the Cubs last night? <laughs> Absolutely not. But I think I just see a soulless team, which is boring white dudes. That's what I see the Dodgers as right now. When you have Sheldon Noisy, Luke Rayleigh, DJ Peters, uh, Zach Rex. Like God, if I had to look at Matt BD one more time, I'm punching somebody. <laughs> Bro, I hate guys <laughs> that make that do don't do shit on the field, and well, they I strike out. That. I'm gonna add AJ Pollock to the mix. I'm sorry. No, 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 like, no. I'm sorry. God, God, God. Stop. How is this guy healthy but hitting 240 with only five dingers? Because once the team's not healthy yet, they're just like in and out of the IL. But once we're getting in a groove, but I have a guy that I think would perfectly suit our roster. Closer for the Pirates, Richard Rodriguez. He's kind of killing it this year. We could throw, I don't know, maybe like DJ Peters. Just just right at him. Like, we don't really need DJ Peters. And Edwin you know, set there. Yes. Helps the would bullpen because you, you could always use a bullpen. So, would you slide him into the closing role or is he a setup guy? I think Kenley's still got it. Like Kenley's still got it. You like, I guess like this happens every year with like Dodgers fans. We just don't trust the team because – once I don't know, it, it's kind of weird, but when the fan base is able to trust the team, it seems like the team plays better. You know, like I don't know, last year when the Dodgers won, there was no fans, but like you can like I don't know, I've been in playoff games, you guys have been to playoff games, you can like feel the effects in the stadium when the team the fans don't have faith in their team. Yeah, very but true. Richard moment. Rodriguez will help shore up the bullpen and get us down the stretch, which we need into the playoffs, and then. I think more arms, more bullpen arms are just really key. But again, we could always go for this guy we've been talking about for years, Josh Hader. You know? Stop. Josh Hader. Josh Hader. If the Yankees continue, I know they're kind of on a little hot streak now, finally. I mean, at one point, they were only one game above 500. If they continue to tank this month, what about like Chapman? I know he's getting old. I know he throws 100 with very little movement but he's still a blow it by you type guy. And he could be a replacement for Kenley Jansen if he goes down or if he starts to struggle, which he has done before. Does he have to blow a playoff game in order to lose his spot as the closing pitcher? That's my question is how, how much slack does Kenley have on the chain left? I mean, at this, at this stage in the game, uh, I mean, it's obvious he's, he tried dipping into that spider attack shit last year. You didn't see the, the game for probably about an inning and a half. He, his fastball rose up to 97. His cutter was looking like a Frisbee. And everything looked spectacular. Doing that this year, though. That's why his ERA is where it's at. That's what I'm saying. So you think it's mechanical, or what do you think it is? So I think he tweaks something 
He tweaked something in his delivery. He 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 made some his liver. He's drinking no, a little delivery. bit. Of delivery. <laughs> he he did something. He he made some sort of alt, uh, alteration with his with his stuff, and he's looking like Kenley of old of oh, seven years ago. So that happened because he actually trained at Driveline in Washington this semester. So or not semester, but in the off season. So he started using weighted balls and getting on that program. And when he's throwing ninety seven. It's ineffective. Like it is effective at 97, but it's more promising if we see like 93, 94 mile an hour fastballs because those are his cutters at higher velocity. He also and has then, a slider. I mean, he's starting to throw a slider. He's thrown a slider the last two years. That's been pretty. I mean, it's not like anything crazy, but it throws them off because he's a he's a cutter pitcher. He's like he's like Mariano in a way. Yeah. No, but it is like, I guess, I guess and we're concerned about his performance, but we already have the replacement there in Bruce Dark Ratterall, although he's struggling right now, right? He's but if we, look, if we look at all of their closers in the league, the best closer in the league right now is Mark Melanson for the Padres. And that dude sucked like two years ago. He sucked the last couple of years. Don't understand so that like, whatsoever. The, and then Craig Kimball is also killing it right now, but he sucked the last couple of years too. So like we can be like frustrated about like down performance, but like especially with closers, their performance is so up and down because it's such a difficult job that I don't think the Dodgers need to make a drastic move. I think more of another closer would help for high, because it's not like the ninth inning that's a problem. It's the high leverage situations that we allow the more runs to pile on. Because we found, like, we've seen it now where, like, Bruzdar last year wasn't our closer, but he came in in high leverage situations, which is more important. So, if anything, we could keep Kenley in the closer role, but have better high leverage guys. Where is Andrew Friedman at right now? Sorry, not Andrew Friedman. Um Big old lefty, uh, Andrew. What was his name? Andrew Cleveland Miller. Indians. Um, Andrew Miller. I Andrew Miller. Bingo. Well, Where's he at? Pulse right now. He's not very good anymore. He got pretty old. Yeah, he, he lost. What about um? What about the righty, uh, the right-handed pitcher, David Robertson or Robinson? Is he still around? Oh, Robertson. Yeah, he's still on the Yankees. Mm, that's a tough one. Closing pitchers. I mean, the problem is you don't like. They're the hardest to project. So it's you like to find a guy within your system that you can say we can shorten your innings and you can throw 97 miles an hour, pick it up and just fire it for an inning, and that'll be your job. Uh, it's a lot easier than trying to go through sabermetrics and find someone from another squad and be like, yes, you're gonna we're gonna trust you every day with this one job, and that's finish our ball game. So well, because I think the Dodgers do a really good job of also like finding guys. So like they really like that guy Jimmy Nelson. He hasn't really worked out yet, but like. With Trinan and other relievers, we've like almost revitalized their careers because our pitching, our pitching staff is so much better, and we're able to. Can like, Trinan actually re re hone in their skill and like get them back after to kill it on the Dodgers? You know. Yeah. Any other uh, points that you guys would like to make about how the team can improve itself over the next month? Yeah. Yes. I think they need to fight a team or just have like a hot take, like a hot mic in an interview. You know, just like deviate the inputs and the outputs, you know, like if you're going to throw the same X into the function, you're going to get Y out every time. Right. Yeah. If you just do something stupid, like I remember when the Dodgers had Puig on the team, this man landed a helicopter on the field. Just like yep. get in the news somewhere else besides losing. Just do something stupid. Man. Exactly. Yeah, that's fair. And then, you know, maybe – you know, there are a few guys that are great at this. I love Austin Barnes. I think he's he's underrated for what he brings to the field. He brings kind of a sense of small ball. Like, I've seen him lay down some, like, sack bunts and suicide squeezes and stuff like that. I think that type of stuff, when you can man manufacture runs, is kind of unsung in today's baseball. But when it's executed, when it, when it's, and when it's executed it looks really nice. And I think the Dodgers can create some mojo – when they do play ball like that, when the bats I think are, they need to bring beers back to ten dollars. Yes, <laughs> that's, that's important. That, bro, you're playing a dangerous game, man. We got the full attendance now. Sixteen. You don't want, dude. dude. You don't want those foos getting those those micheladas for ten dollars, no, bro. No, bro, <laughs> dude. First, tell me why, motherfuckers went to the game and got twenty five dollar. Beers, listen to me, okay. $25 micheladas, hijo de su puta madre. $25. Yeah, 
That's more than – that's like parking. Oh, I know. It's worse You know why parking. they have to do that? You know why they have to do that? Because let's say we play the Astros or somebody – and we have ten dollar beers. People can get drunk, and they're gonna kill an Astros fan in the parking lot. Doesn't so matter if we're getting drunk in the parking lot, homie. That shit don't matter. We're we're gonna have to get drunk in the parking lot because we can't drink in the stadium. So you have no option to limit us. It's mm-hmm. it's over. It's a wrap. If oh, we got- get past security, it's a wrap. Have fun. Oh, I got I got one for you. I got one for you. Mandatory sock check at the gate. I like that. You gotta go above the yeah. Okay. Above the knee. I'm fucking yeah, with yeah, he's with it. He's with it. <laughs> Emma would be with it. <laughs> All right. Anything else from you guys? Or are we are we good for today? Mandatory sock check. It's final Mandatory take. sock check. I think that uh, that's a good name play. of the podcast. Yes. <laughs> that's that's a good name of this episode. So um, thank you everybody for stopping in and checking us out. Um, this is our makes and bad takes. Thank you. Thanks again. Thanks to Vendetta Sports Media. You guys have a great day. Follow us on Twitter. We're going to talk about that in a little bit. We don't really do that right now, but we will. So you'll see us eventually. All right. Mm -hmm. All right, guys. Good seeing you. Good seeing you. Bye.